crypto here and today 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 we have got your second satoshi candidate he goes by the name of adam back born in july 1970 back is a british businessman cryptographer and cypherpunk he was born in london uk and now resides in malta he has a computer science phd from the university of exeter which is in south west england back is a pioneer on early digital asset research similarly as way die we're gonna get to him david chown and hal finney all of these guys being cypherpunks so back in 1997 back invented hash cash for those of you who don't know what hash cash is it is pretty much the proof of work system used to limit email spam and denial of service attacks and more recently has become known for its use in the bitcoin creation as part of the mining algorithm hash cash was proposed in 1997 by adam beck and described back in 2002 when he properly wrote it into a paper so satoshi nakamoto used adam beck's hash cash proof of work to create bitcoin pretty much so back was the first to describe the known interactive forward secrecy security property for emails and to observe that any identity based encryption scheme can be used to provide known interactive forward secrecy so he is also known for promoting the use of ultra compact code with his two line and three line rsa crypto system signature files and known exportable t-shirts to protest cryptography export regulations back was one of the first two people to receive an email from satoshi nakamoto himself in 2016 financial times cited adam beck as a potential satoshi nakamoto candidate along with nick zabo and hal finney in 2020 a youtube channel called barely sociable claimed that adam beck was indeed satoshi nakamoto of course back denied this but check this out our final clue is that satoshi nakamoto is against a larger block size in the present day and it's time for me to reveal who he is when it comes to this or any topic i have to say the simplest answer is likely correct and it's no surprise that one candidate literally matches every single detail to satoshi nakamoto despite how many people will tell you that satoshi nakamoto is a collective or satoshi nakamoto was made by the government, there's not really any evidence to suggest that. If you recall from part two, I stated that Satoshi was either trying to throw us off the trail at every given opportunity, or the clues should be taken at face value. As it turns out, he didn't go to that great of lengths to hide his identity. The first clues that we should take a look at are which technical documents were used to create Satoshi's white paper. There are only two core ideas that were infused into the creation of Bitcoin. Sure, you had a lot of applied cryptography and other aspects of the project, but the main 1,000-foot inspiration was the B-Money proposal as it outlined all of the ideas for a digital ledger that we see in the blockchain. And the second component was the proof-of-work system, also known as Hashcash. This is used in the Bitcoin mining function and is used to verify all of our transactions. The person who invented Hashcash was Adam Back, Blockstream CEO. And throughout this video, you may have noticed I've put some importance on Blockstream's attachment to a lot of the things that were going on in 2015. So let's take a look at Mr. Adam Back. Adam Back is referenced in Satoshi Nakamoto's very first email. This email was sent to Wei Dai, and in this message, Satoshi was reaching out because he wanted to get the data publication for Wei Dai's B Money. The email reads, I was very interested to read your B-Money page. I'm getting ready to release a paper that expands on your ideas into a complete working system. Adam Back at hashcash.org noticed the similarities and pointed me to your site. This email implies another message was sent to Adam Back, but what's interesting here is that Satoshi supposedly corresponded with him, but there's no evidence to ever suggest that. We have correspondence between Satoshi and basically everyone else except for Adam Back. When Adam has been asked about it, he'll always virtue signal and say that he would delete or shred any evidence. 
That's interesting that you want to protect Satoshi in this case, but when someone who obviously isn't Satoshi like Paul LaRue makes a headline, you'll spread obvious misinformation. That's incredibly convenient, because after going down this rabbit hole, I'm convinced that emails never existed in the first place. The day that B Money was announced, it didn't get any attention. There's only about nine discussion threads on the cryptography mailing list about this B Money proposal, and two of them are about the link being broken. This paper was so obscure that the person who actually wrote about it was Adam Back. Don't get it twisted, Wei Dai definitely wrote the paper, but Adam Back copied the paper onto the cryptography mailing list and asked for feedback. In the next email in this thread, it basically outlines the entire thing. B Money seems to be a book entry eCash system related to Hashcash, the book open and distributed. Anonymity is derived from the fact that participants can be pseudonymous. Hashcash would be a good candidate function for Wei's decentralized minting idea. To create value, you burn CPU time, just like Hashcash, but Wei's distributed open book entry system allows you to pseudonymously exchange value. So here we directly see that Adam just said that B Money would be a candidate for Hashcash and even mentions that pseudonyms would be a great way to get money out anonymously? Hmm. I've looked through all the discussion on B Money on the various mailing lists and most people didn't even like the idea. Now if you're wondering whether Adam Back could have pulled it off, I would say 100% yes. He's the perfect candidate. The guy has a PhD in distributed computing systems, which would be the perfect background for building a decentralized computer network. Bitcoin was coded in C++ and Atom codes proficiently in C++. Something we need to consider is that Satoshi Nakamoto is an inventor. He created a new piece of technology. And this guy was filing multiple patents a year up until April of 2005 and then he just disappears until March 2010, which is a full year after Bitcoin was released. I looked through all of the mailing lists that his email was associated to and he goes dormant from 07 until 2010. He was also not writing any academic papers during this time. According to Adam Back, Satoshi supposedly even sent him the software once it was released. But according to him, he shrugged it off and didn't mine a single Bitcoin. Adam has never provided proof of these emails either. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, maybe Adam didn't have any interest in anonymous payments anymore. After all, that was back in 1998. But here's the thing, around 2007, right when Satoshi started on Bitcoin's development, if you read Adam Back's Wikipedia page, which he wrote himself, it reads, he has an interest in privacy technology and electronic cash. So you had time to update your Wikipedia information, stating that you're interested in anonymous payment systems right when Satoshi started development on Bitcoin, but when Satoshi finally figured out how to do something that you planned on doing since 1998, you don't even bother to open the software? How convenient. It's not like you were busy during this time. Call me crazy, but if we dive deeper into Adam Back, more coincidences just start lining up. What about Satoshi's writing style? Well, if you recall from part one, he uses British English, and whenever possible, he's known to use double space after each period. Adam Back frequently includes double spacing after each sentence in his various writings, and he's British, so British English Remember how Satoshi hit a political message inside the Genesis block that references the Times, a UK newspaper? Well, what if I told you Adam Back is known for leaving political messages with compact code? And he grew up in London, where the Times newspaper was distributed. Moving on, not many people know this, but web design wasn't Satoshi's specialty. He actually received help in creating the forums from a guy named Marty Malmi. But if you take a look at the earliest capture of Bitcoin.org when it was done by Satoshi, it's incredibly minimalistic. And if you take a look at Cypherspace.org, Adam Mack's website, and look at the earliest capture, it looks incredibly similar to Bitcoin in layout. Satoshi Nakamoto also looked up to Hal Finney. Do you know who else looked up to Hal Finney? Adam Back. As I mentioned earlier, there's a large gap in Adam Back's digital footprint, and he reappears on Twitter in 2010. When he resurfaces, he becomes a resident of Malta. Malta is the location you move to if you're about to receive a large amount of money that you don't want to be taxed heavily on. Do you remember from part one when Satoshi said, I make this appeal to WikiLeaks not to use Bitcoin? If you dig through Adam Back's 19,000 tweets to the very beginning when he took to Twitter, his first year on the platform, was him advocating about the discussion of WikiLeaks. In 2012, he started updating Wikipedia articles about Bitcoin, providing detailed insight into the history of it. But something you should know is that the guy didn't get involved with Bitcoin until April of 2013. Once again, this guy cared enough about Bitcoin's history to update its Wikipedia article, but not enough to mine a single Bitcoin. 
It's also incredibly interesting that Blockstream and its entire purpose is to hire people to further the development of Bitcoin. The guy has received over a hundred million in funding, but here's the thing, he's never once committed a single line of code. Hmm, how would these investors know the guy's qualified to further the development of Bitcoin if he's never touched the thing? Either these are the world's dumbest investors, or he's Satoshi Nakamoto. Do you guys want to know the date that Adam Back does finally join the Bitcoin forums and start participating in the community? April 17th, 2013. This is the exact date that an article by the name of The Well-Deserved Fortune of Satoshi Nakamoto came out. He joined back the day everyone figured out how much money Satoshi Nakamoto had. In his introductory post, he starts off bossing people around. He doesn't have a natural progression into the community whatsoever. His first post is telling others to fix certain explanations on the Bitcoin wiki. A few days later, someone ended up linking the post about Satoshi Nakamoto's fortune on the forums, and Adam chimed in saying, well, that's kind of an unfortunate privacy bug. Coincidentally, I thought I fixed a few potential issues like this in Hashcash. For Satoshi now, maybe he can find a private buyer via a lawyer and Swiss banking services. Or perhaps we're forced to implement ZeroCoin to protect him. Anyway, don't sweat it, people. He can probably get by on a few million play money and his post-privacy bug fix mining hoard until there's a solution on his post. When was that bug fixed, by the way? I can't tell from those low-res graphs. And he's probably holding out for the 10K Bitcoin era anyway. Have you ever noticed that we only know about Satoshi's first year of mining? Well, it's incredibly interesting here that Adam Back implies an entirely separate hoard of coins. And the bug fix he's referring to is so incredibly obscure how would you know about a mining bug fix that was never included in the change logs in 2010 when you supposedly got to the forum two days ago? And the fact that he mentioned these Swiss banking services that are confidential, that might explain why Blockstream shifted gears to profit off the block size being small. We may never know, because Adam Back, just like Blockstream, never wants to make the financial intentions clear. Later on, Adam Back actually wrote to the author of this article and said, Question for the blog author. When was that bug fixed? What proportion of the 130 mil did he spend or cash? That's just curiosity. And I suppose it seems that you're getting too close. You might want to stop in Nakamoto's interest. So in conclusion, what do you guys think about Adam Beck as a Satoshi candidate? He created the proof of work system way back in 1997 and Satoshi even mentioned him in the reference of the Bitcoin white paper that was the story of Adam Beck.